E.J. Dionne is with the Washington Post. Out of the fabric of Rhode Island and Massachusetts, Mr. Dionne writes book after book. Bonus round, this time he teams up with Team Orenstein, Orenstein and Mann, and they write One Nation After Trump. It's a book Democrats and Republicans, and maybe Senator McConnell, have to read. Uh, EJ, is it going to be One Nation After McConnell, after what we saw yesterday, Graham Cassidy in flames, Senator Corker out the door, and Roy Moore of Alabama joining uh, Team Far Right? Is it going to be One Nation After McConnell? Well, I think it might be three or four parties after McConnell. Thanks for having me on this morning. Um, you know, the, the line that's gone through my head now for some years is a line from John F. Kennedy's inaugural address. He who foolishly rides to power on the back of the tiger ends up inside. And I think the Republican leadership has courted these forces, extreme forces, that led to Roy Moore's victory yesterday for years. They thought they could keep a lid on them, and they couldn't. It first gave them Donald Trump, and now it's given them uh, this Roy Moore victory, which, as you say, is a slap in the face to McConnell. And no matter what he says, it's a right. slap in the face for President Trump. I think the other fascinating thing about yesterday is this was the Steve Bannon, Donald Trump Trump primary, and Steve Bannon won. Uh, and I think this is going to right. empower his forces in the party uh, to mount a lot of other challenges. And Bob Corker probably didn't look forward to that. One nation after Trump, and you talk about our little platoons. What is a little platoon now of note in the Democrat Party? Well, you know, first of all, I think everybody sort of looks at the party that lost the previous presidential election and says they're in disarray. They said that about the Republicans after Obama won um, in 2008. Uh, so I, as some of this is just talk, I think. Uh, what Democrats have to figure out how to do is to bring together um, two basic ideas. There's a lot of talk about the Democrats losing the white working class vote. And they did lose it by a big margin, although President Obama lost it, but Hillary Clinton lost it by more. Um, but, but the focus on uh, working class voters has to extend beyond uh, mm -hmm. whites. The working class is also African American and Latino, and they've got to figure out a way to say, look, this party is committed both to racial justice and economic justice. Whenever I talk like that, people say it's my Bobby right. Kennedy fantasy, because, of course, Bobby Kennedy pulled together these constituencies. But that's what Democrats have to do. It's almost always their job. Uh, and they got to do it in a forward-looking way that says, we got a new economy here. Um, the jobs of the past won't exist in the future. But if we don't give people opportunity, yeah. Uh, we're going to have a lot of chaos in the country, and political chaos included. E.J. Dion, if we were to have presidential elections in the U.S. in 2018, who would the Democratic Party put up to stand against Donald Trump? Um, I think you would have to hire out Fenway Park up here in Boston to fit all of the Democrats uh, who want to run for president in 20. Uh, 2018. So I have no clue. First of all, I think all pundits should get out of the prediction business yeah. after the 2016 election. Um, but I think you've got a, a right. range of people mm -hmm. from Elizabeth Warren and Kirsten Gillibrand and Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris. You've got uh, Chris Murphy uh, in Connecticut, who's an interesting candidate, Sherrod Brown. I mean, you're right. going to have mm -hmm. a very big field starting no. out. And a lot of Democrats are looking at Trump and saying, well, if he can do it, I can do it.